I'm sorry I'm going to get in trouble with staff. I don't do this the right way. Now, when President Harris and I took uh, I mean, look, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to just the last question I'll take and I, I'm really going to be in trouble. I'm getting in trouble, Sean. I mean, that was just a sampling of President Biden's most frequent gaffes that have many at home and here in the studio wondering who's really running things at the White House. A new poll shows the majority of Americans do not believe Biden is in charge. It's along party lines. That number continues to grow. More than about 80 percent of Republicans uh, believe he's not in charge. 32 percent of Democrats and more than 58 percent of independents. Those are not good numbers. Joining us now is the host of The Rubin Report, Dave Rubin. Hey, Hi, guys. Dave. Thanks for joining us. It's good to be with you. I hope I don't get in trouble for being here and speaking my mind freely. <laughs> Uh, this, is a, this is a safe space, okay? You're okay. You're okay. So, <laughs> okay, good. Dave, who, very, very, very important question. Who's really running the White House? I think that's the million dollar question. You know, I interviewed President Trump about 10 days ago and I asked him that very question and he sort of said he doesn't know. I mean, I think there's some debate as to whether it's whatever is left of the Clinton machine or is it really the Obama machine or is there's something even sort of more radical than that that really is also driving all of the BLM stuff and the critical race theory stuff and everything else. So I don't know who's in charge, but I do know one thing. It's not Joe Biden. It's obviously not Joe Biden. We all know that there is something cognitively wrong with him. The stuttering, the stammering, the inability to maintain a thought, then these odd moments where he keeps actually saying what he thinks and then telling us that he's gonna get in trouble for it. I mean, imagine, Imagine if this was Trump or if Trump was walking out there when he's getting ice cream and he had to have notes in front of him to know what to say. It's like, I don't know who's in charge, but I know it ain't that guy. You know, it's funny. I was doing some research for a project that I was working on. And over and over again, members of Congress of both parties kept referring to the White House Chief of Staff, Ron Klain, as Prime Minister Klain. And I think that that's... <laughs> I'm just telling you, it's it's. I, I was actually shocked. I hadn't heard that before, but it makes sense considering the thing because we know it's not Vice President Harris. So then you start to wonder, and I think Dave, you're absolutely right. There's this cadre of four or five people in the White House that we've heard about before: Anita Dunn, um, uh, Kate Benningfield, his communications director, who've been around him. Um, the the. Um, the, his counselor and then the, the head of Ledge Affair. I mean, people have been around him and, and they're the ones running the show. There's no question about it. But speaking well, of by like, the way, Sean, Sean, remember, let's not forget real quick. Let's not forget that a couple of years ago, Obama gave that interview where he said, in essence, his dream would be that he could have a third term, but he just wouldn't be president. He would be behind the scenes. I mean, those are literally his words. So I don't know. Well, is it Obama? Maybe. Is it Obama but, acting but he, through and, those and, people, perhaps? And even recently, he did say, he weighed in, and he said, you know, this is basically, I mean, so he not only did he say it in the past, but he's actually keeps talking about how he thinks this is the fulfillment of his third term. Um, but I, I do want to shift gears and turn to crime, because it's amazing. Over the weekend, there were 379 shootings and 142 people killed. Now, granted, it was a holiday weekend, but according to a poll from ABC News and The Washington Post, that says only 38 percent of Americans approve of how the Biden administration, this gets back to who's in charge, is handling crime. The president is promising our, quote, brightest future and says he gives you his word as a Biden, of course. But these crime stats tell a different story. I mean, I, I feel like th this is getting completely overlooked. And obviously, let's not forget the fact of all of the crimes that his own son, Hunter, has been accused of. But you know, we, we've got New York Governor Andrew Cuomo issuing an executive order today declaring gun violence in New York a disaster emergency. I, I think that these guys are doing everything they can to not focus on the fact that there is a real crime spree, a real murder spree happening in this country under their watch. They all control the cities. They control the White House. They control the Congress. Sean, that's the key point. These are all Democratic-run cities. I'm not saying this to be partisan, I'm saying it to be truthful. New York, Chicago, Chicago, a hundred people were shot this past weekend, July 4th weekend. Uh, last I heard it was 18 fatally in Chicago. This is run by a woman, Lori Lightfoot, who says that 99% of her critics are her critics because they're racist. 
I'm not uh, criticizing her because she's black. I'm criticizing her because she has a city that has 18 people dead from this past weekend and, you know, 82 others shot non-fatally. Um, it's not a coincidence that in Republican-run cities, let's say conservative-run cities, that law and order matters, that if you break the law, you're arrested. You know, I'm sure you guys saw the video of this weekend, Neiman Marcus in San Francisco, people just grabbing bags and running out the door. They've got a DA, this guy, Chesa Bodine, who's being recalled, thankfully, and hopefully it fully goes through, who basically is saying, yeah, you can kind of do crime and we're not gonna do anything about it, just the same way George Gascon, the, the DA here, in Los Angeles, former DA, oh, there's the video right there, former DA of San Francisco, he's doing the same thing in Los Angeles, and we just covered it on my show this morning, uh, New York City's getting a new DA, and he's basically saying, yeah, we're not gonna prosecute uh, petty theft or trespassing or jumping the turnstile in the subway. So in essence, you're telling people we don't have laws. Now, my hope will be is that, you know, if you're a DA, you're supposed to, your job is to protect the law, not to decide which laws you're going to enforce. So I actually think all these DAs could be in a lot of trouble, but that means we need a functional legal system. I'm not so sure we have that anymore either. Yeah, there's no question that President Biden and these Democrats, they are not tough on crime. But Dave Rubin, we appreciate your insight. Thank you for joining us. And again, I apologize for saying what I think and I'll have to you know, watch out for my guys. <laughs> you're in trouble, we in trouble. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.